Well then, it's been an interesting 24 hours in terms of space weather. We've got solar energetic particle events, another coronal mass ejection headed toward Earth. We'll tell you all about it, when it will arrive, and show you the most spectacular imagery you'll find of the closest star in the known universe. This is a 24-hour video from SDO. It's featuring also the SUVI 304 angstroms wavelength. And there was a spectacular CME. And uh, it came out of this area right over here. It was accompanied by an M-class solar flare. But more importantly, the Nicki Minaj filament is now headed toward your back door or front door, all your doors. Because right here, you see this filament? Whoops! A portion of that will be hitting Earth. We'll tell you when. Don't worry. Here's a Doppler. Uh, this is a difference imagery of it, actually. There's a difference imagery. And here comes that filament. We've also got the difference imagery from up here. And it's been an interesting 24 hours. Interesting indeed. So here's a full disk image as well. It's SDO 304 angstroms plus GOES SUVI 304 angstroms. That's the gray portion you see on the outside. It does have a wider field of view than the SDO, but also features a little lower resolution. Let's take a brief look at sunspots here. We do have one more sunspot group that just rose over the northeastern limb. You might see that popping up right at the end of that browse data imagery that depicts yesterday, July 28th, plus today, to date, July 29th. Here's a magnetogram. And before we continue on, please take a moment to press that like button, press the subscribe button, press the share button. And uh, we thank you for your patronage, especially Smash Team members. So if you haven't checked out our homepage, go scope it out. It's smashomash.com <clears throat> and welcome to the Neo Renaissance. It is an exciting time for space weather and we're doing it from the perspective of cosmology because, well, heliophysics is cosmology. So help us on our mission. <clears throat> and if you want to read about it, you can find it on the forum, smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. Now, we did stream that insane CME, well, both of those insane CMEs. Here's that one coming out of the northwestern limb. That was on our Twitch channel throughout the day yesterday. And then later, here is the Nicki Minaj filament. There it goes. Or again, should I say, here it comes. I definitely should say, here it comes. And let's take a brief look at planet Earth here. Are you wondering what's going on as far as volcanic activity? Well, we certainly are. So we cover it daily on the channel. Here's what's currently erupting. Subinose Jima tops out the list with a 6,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. Bagana now back on the list as it explodes. It's producing a flight level 160. It's a 16,000-foot ash plume. Luatolo, 6,000-foot ash plume. Krakatau exploding. A one-mile-high ash plume there, 5,000-foot. It's a flight level 050. Merapi continues to extrude new real estate on the Isle of Central Java, Indonesia. No indication on an ash plume there. Lava dome volumes are measured approximately 1.7 cubic meters. That's a big lava dome. Semeru exploding, flight level 140. It's a 14,000 foot ash plume. Emissions possible from Fuego. No volcanic ash observed from Sangay. Sabankaya exploding, flight level 200. 20,000 foot ash plume over Peru. Not sure about Ubinas. Please do not pull vault the caldera. Next, we'll look at seismic activity and Here's a convenient 90-day bar graph for your viewing pleasure. We'll cite quakes of a 5 magnitude or greater for the past 24 hours. On our trusty USGS list, Fiji had a 5.0. At 590 kilometers estimated depth, 
That was at 1738 Universal Time yesterday afternoon. Alaska had a 5.0 as well. That was at over 100 kilometers estimated depth at 19, 1911. 1911, your single action favorite time of day. 1911 there yesterday evening was that 5.0 on the Alaskan Peninsula. Only about 13 minutes later, there was a 5.6 at India. And then another 13 minutes later, a 5.6 at South Sandwich Islands. So a quake here. And then a quake here, and then a quake here, all in a very short period of time. All within an hour of each other. And besides that, a 5.4 at South Sandwich Islands area. That was at 6.57 Universal Time this morning. And it's time to get back to space. Space, a frontier. These are the voyages of the most comprehensive daily space weather content and solar imagery you'll find in the known universe. We saw a niche, so we decided to fill it with facts. Still controversial in the year 2023. This is SDO 171 Angstroms for the past 24 hours. And again, it has been an exciting 24 hours to say the least. Here we've added 131 Angstroms. Another species of ionized iron. It's a bunch of hot gas. And hopefully your YouTube content isn't full of hot air. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux now at 168 solar flux units. And you can expect this to uptick a lot because like we said a few days ago, there's a big uptick coming because there was a lot of activity on the far side of the sun. There's the one-year graph to put it in context. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux is this black line here. 168 is the current state. And let's take a look at those CMEs here, not yet modeled by NOAA. So if you're wondering when that CME, the Nicki Minaj filament, is going to arrive, the answer is sometime around midday on July 2nd. So anytime starting on July 2nd, you can expect to see a CME impact. It could be a significant one. That was a huge filament indeed. So that's a Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. Again, NOAA not yet modeling this one. And of course, July 2nd is outside of their prediction model anyway, On their, as far as their text prediction goes. NASA has not modeled that one yet either. They modeled the one that came out of the northwestern limb, as you can see here, but not yet forecast. So July 2nd, expecting a CME impact. Let's take a look at some more data here, like what's going on on planet Earth. That's always interesting, right? Here are the past four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space, and it has been geomagnetically calm. You can see a rather homogeneous uh, magnetohydrodynamic pressure there. And that is just what it's like when the solar wind doesn't have any variations in it. As the system tries to reach static equilibrium, as all things in the known universe do. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Again, it is the last four hours. This depicts magnetic flux density. And no major shifts happening there either, according to the space weather modeling framework. Next, the planetary K index only at one. KP1 is the planetary K index an average of global geomagnetism, and here are the solar wind parameters. 373 kilometers a second is the speed. Solar wind density here, just under three protons per cubic centimeter. That is fairly unremarkable. Goes magnetometers here, just in a normal range. Nothing to write home about there either. 
Although there was some maneuvering happening yesterday by both the ghost, both the ghost 16 and the ghost 18. Next, we'll take a look at the heliospheric current sheet, as there has been certainly some uh, magnetic indecision, especially in the northeastern limb. And as forecasted, sudden changes happen when that filament ejected. No real surprise there, as that affects the measurement and the creation of this top view ecliptic plane field plot. So. If you look at the last image here, Earth is in a North Pole current sheet, and there is a sector boundary crossing here. You can expect that to show up in a couple of days at the moment. Earth is in a North Pole current sheet, South Pole current sheet on the way. Next, our line of sight field plot. We show it daily on the channel as we watch Solar Cycle 25 progress and get exciting. It looks like it's going to be a stronger solar cycle than solar cycle 23, maybe just a little bit stronger. And uh, <clears throat> these are just basic facts through an exhaustive analysis of all of the data. Here's our line of sight coronal hole plot. And I would suspect, let's just bring up the last image here and slowly bring this back. See, you, you can see a sudden change there in the magnetic fields up there. That was no surprise to our regular viewers either. Right in there, a sudden filament collapse and reorientation and coronal mass ejection up there in the northeast caused huge changes to the solar B field there. So <clears throat> completely different magnetism at the moment. This is the past four days on our line of sight coronal hole plot. We've got North Pole coronal holes here at the moment around the Southern Hemisphere, a South Pole coronal hole rotating in a one setting up here in the Northwest. So here's the view from SDO. There's a 211 angstroms wavelength for the last 24 hours. And exactly as forecast, that filament collapses, and you can suddenly see coronal holes opening right around there where that filament was. Some of that filament is still intact there. Uh, and yeah, so coronal holes suddenly opening and then suddenly closing, greatly affecting the magnetic field environment. And let's take a look at sunspots here. Again, there is at least one new one. And let me just bring up some imagery for you. So here is the data from yesterday plus today. That's July 28th and July 29th to date. No major changes there. Again, one new sunspot did rise up here. So that is another large sunspot in the northeast. It will offset the setting of this sunspot down here in the southwest. Here's our flare monitor. So that'll be sunspot 3391, this new sunspot right up here. Next, here's an equatorial zoom in at 1600 and 1700 angstroms from SDO. And it looks like a bunch of carbon got made up here. Yeah, a bunch of carbon just got nuclear fused up there in the northwestern limb around the same time that coronal mass ejection ejected. And moving right along, it is time to look at energetic particles and solar flare. So there was a solar energetic particle event known as an SEP. And there it is. This might be the most significant one yet. Not a whole lot bigger than the last one. Quite a bit bigger than the last one, but not a lot bigger than the last significant one. I'll say that. So there's the one day graph of it. And that is causing significant polar radio blackouts, especially at the North Polar region. Expect equatorial radio blackouts to continue as solar flares will continue as well. So here is the deabsorption region predictions. You can see both southern polar radio blackouts there and most of the north polar region there 
is experiencing significant high frequency radio signal attenuation uh, all the way down to like 7 megahertz there you can expect this to continue for days during this solar energetic particle event and by the way, we put out additional information about this to the Smash team. If you haven't logged into the Smash team lately, go check out the recent posts at smashamash.com slash smash team because the past three solar energetic particle events have all had some interesting features and lacks thereof. So I won't say anything else about that. Smashamash.com slash smash team for more information on solar energetic particle events. So that's what's going on in the ionosphere. And again, you can expect continued equatorial radio blackouts from solar flaring and continued polar radio blackouts from the solar energetic particle event. So here's flaring. And this flare here is the one that was associated with that northwestern coronal mass ejection, that spectacular one that we streamed to Twitch. It was an M4 class solar flare. Here's once again a solar flare happening while we create the video. It's like about a nearly a C9 class solar flare. And let's take a look at our favorite frequencies for solar flare viewing. That's 131 plus 94 angstroms. So we've now got a very high likelihood of large solar flares, both in the eastern limb and some possibility for a large flare down here in the southwest. But really, these areas, hang on a minute, these areas right here are the most likely to produce a large flare in the coming 24 hours. Like we said yesterday, this featured a fleeting possibility for large solar flares. And there you go. And M4 is a decent sized solar flare. Part of that might have been obscured by the solar limb, by the way. So here's a close up of that. And here is the equatorial zoom. How you like them apples? Here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, we like it a lot. Yeah, we like it a lot. Now, the next thing to cover is coronal mass ejections and filaments. But before we do that, let's take a moment to talk about space. Here's a star chart. This is what's going on over Lehigh Valley. It's only like an hour after sunrise at the moment. If you want to make your own star chart like mine, try skyandtelescope.org. There are many places you can create your own star chart. And here's your solar system forecast. We'll advance things one week to give you more of an idea of where things are located. Here's where things will be on August 5th. And by the way, we're going to be talking more about cosmology and putting more little tidbits in the videos in the in the future here we've uh, decided that it's important to talk cosmology since again that is the purpose of the channel the heliophysics that we're doing we're interested in it from a cosmology perspective it just happens to also impact earth and human technology so the astronomy picture of the day should make some people mad because they think the moon landing was fake and there is some great imagery of of Apollo 11 on July 20th, 1969. apod.nasa.gov is where that comes from, by the way. apod.nasa.gov. You can use those images even for commercial purposes. If you like, they are completely free to use. So here is our first set of CME images. 
And yesterday, none of that ejecta is likely to be headed toward Earth. It's off to the northwest. However, looking at today's images, it's been a little different as the day has started out with a solar energetic particle event and a halo eruption. That is the Nicki Minaj filament, and it is headed partially toward Earth. Now, most of that will actually miss to the southeast, but there is likely an Earth-directed component. 99.9% .9 sure of that. Again, expect that to arrive on Wednesday, August 2nd. So here we've paused the Soho Lasco C2 and C3. So here's that halo. There it is. And here it is on the C2. We'll also show stereo A. It will corroborate what I've just stated. Here's stereo A on the left. So right about here, just after midnight, you can see that CME coming out. And here on stereo A, there it is. Once again, here it comes. So here come some insane images. So this is, uh, it's been a, a banner 24 hours for CMEs. That is the SDO 304 angstroms wavelength along with Soho Lasco C2 and C3 all based difference imageries. So that's a 24 hour video. Here's a little closer view. You can see all that static appearing on the aperture there. That is the solar energetic particle event as those relativistic protons strike the coronagraphs located at Lagrange 1 outside Earth's magnetosphere. And here's an even closer view. How you like them apples? Pretty sweet, right? All right. So that brings us to filaments. And of course, I strategically name filaments. Like the reason that I named that one the Nicki Minaj filament is I figured that we have very few Nicki Minaj fans that watch the channel. So check it out. There it is. And here it comes. That's the ground-based El Taide Spain Hydrogen Alpha Telescope. Expect coronal mass ejections to continue moving forward for the next, like, year and a half at similar levels. Maybe 16 to 18 months of similar levels of solar activity are expected by those of us who are interested in facts. By the way, if you want to name filaments after living people, or perhaps brain-dead people, join us over on X, the pathetically censored shadow ban platform, recently rebranded from Twitter, now known as X, is one of the places you can find us on social media. Just follow the hashtag, name that filament. You can name them yourself. And if you want to see daily fitness, lifestyle, and other types of posts like that, perhaps your motivation to do physical activity, join us over on Instagram. You'll find us all over the internet at smash -o -mash. So here are the past couple of hours from the GOES-18 SUVI. And it looks like another CME might be propagating right now, right up here in the northwestern limb, just behind that new sunspot, which is another large sunspot, I might add. And let's get to our bonus feature segment. Satellite charging hazards are non-existent. It is smooth sailing for satellites. There are no low energy electrons building up on the surfaces, and there are no high energy electrons building up in the internal circuitry of those satellites. So you can expect good communications. At least from the satellite down to Earth. 
Next to Goes Electron Flux, and it's just in an operating range there. Nothing to write home about on the Goes Electron Flux. Here's the one-year graph to put that in context, just kind of in the middle of the range there. Here's the forecast model, NOAA expecting similar levels at the next update. The green boxes are the forecast, the yellow diamonds are the observation. It's measured at the F layer of the ionosphere, so we show the vibrational frequency of that layer. One slice of the atmosphere, the bridge between Earth and space, is at about 300 kilometers of altitude, the F layer. Feel free to pause the video on this frame if you're not familiar with the information depicted. Here is the vibrational frequency of the F layer. Ionosphere looking fairly healthy here at the moment. Nothing really too interesting going on there. When that CME arrives, you can expect some a lot of low-frequency anomalies happening. Until then, looking like it's going to be smooth sailing until about the 2nd of July, when you can expect some fireworks in the ionosphere. A, low frequency, a series of low-frequency anomalies are likely, as the ionosphere will puff up. Anyway, here is the anomaly gram. That's anomaly in megahertz from a 30-day median. Low-frequency anomaly depicted in red, high-frequency in blue. Another feature we show daily on the channel. It's basically data archiving. It's called actual science. Anyway, here is the latest image. That's 11 o'clock Universal Time ionogram, and there's the 11 o'clock Universal Time anomalygram. Total electron content is literally a count of the free electrons up to this point here where your GPS satellite's located. Through the outer plasma sphere, inner Van Allen belt, inner plasma sphere, and the ionosphere, free electrons create signal refraction, which is what is being depicted on the total electron content imagery. So here is the total electron content. We are seeing some anomalies here uh, in the southern hemisphere mainly, as we have been seeing for the past couple of weeks, actually. You can see some significant GPS errors there, uh, mainly in the southern hemisphere. We'll also show the total electron content anomaly from the 10-day average over North America. which if it can be used to forecast earthquakes, we're not seeing it, at least not yet. So there is the anomaly from the 10-day average of electron content, literally a count of free electrons from ground level to about 12,500 miles of altitude, the approximate altitude of your GPS satellite. It's in the inner portion of the outer Van Allen belt. Last but not least, We'll close out the space weather portion of the video with the latest intensity gram and the latest colorized magnetogram. So here's this new sunspot. It's actually got leading South Pole umbrae, so perhaps another reverse polarity sunspot there, folks. Check it out. There's a South Pole umbra being trailed by a North Pole Umbra. So it's starting things out reverse polarity. Now, it may actually be two separate groups. We may see some more South Pole Umbra behind that, but at the moment, it looks like a reverse polarity sunspot, period. Those are just facts. And there's the full disk rock back. We do have multiple regions likely to produce major flares. Again, the most likely place to see a major flare would be someplace in this triangle. Second most likely place would be in this diamond. So that is your solar flare forecast. And let's talk meteorology. So we've got some Saharan dust to start out the meteorology segment. A new Saharan dust event happening there. Really dense dust here right off the west coast of Africa. And some of that making its way across the central Atlantic. That would be known to tap down tropical systems, tamp down tropical systems, if they are showing up. Anyway, here's what we normally show on our meteorology segment, wind maps. There is a surface wind scenario of the east. Here is the jet stream scenario for the east. 
jet stream scenario for the west as the jet stream stays mostly north of the United States. Here's the surface wind scenario. Surface winds of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And here are the jet streams. Moving right along to look at some satellite imagery. From windy.com, by the way. Windy.com satellite imagery is fantastic. If you haven't checked it out, there is a free app. We've got some heavy weather here moving into Pennsylvania as we speak. The Great Lakes region there featuring some significant cloud cover indeed. We'll show you the forecast in a minute. First, the clouds and fog view from the shortwave radiation satellite. That depicts 3.9 micrometer infrared radiation. In other words, clouds and fog at night. Yeah, clouds, they emit radiation. It's called the greenhouse effect. Yeah, the greenhouse effect. It's all too real. Why do you think it's why do you think it stays warm when it's cloudy at nighttime? It's because clouds are reflecting infrared radiation back at the ground level. Preventing the earth from losing heat. Yeah, cloudy nights are warmer and cloudy days are cooler. That's just basic facts of meteorology. All right, so here's our smoke map. And no major smoke events happening there, except mainly in Oregon, as far as in the U.S., northern Canada. Saskatchewan and Manitoba are a little bit smokier. Shout out to our delightful viewers from Canada. We've got plenty of them. Next to our weather.gov map, and if your location is lit on the map, just click the map here at weather.gov. Lots of severe weather warnings there in Ohio. And lots of heat advisories. We'll show you the key. Weather.gov is where to head to get your weather warnings. What do we have there? Excessive heat watches there in the Florida Panhandle. A bunch of different types of warnings across the country. Weather.gov. Here come some forecasts. This is your GFS 72-hour temperature anomaly forecast. Since the world is burning up, it's, it must be the hottest thing ever. It's the hottest thing ever, depending on what your time frame is, if the word ever includes the last 10 years or something. I'll just leave it at that. That's your 72-hour temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Next, we'll show the jet stream forecast. That is 250 millibar winds. And again, it will stay mostly north of the U.S. here which means hot temperatures south of that can be expected to continue. Last but not least, your 72-hour pressure and precipitation forecast. And that severe weather is expected to move east across New York, according to that GFS model. And next, lightning. And we did have a major conflagration of lightning happening there uh, across Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, now moving into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. So that's the past like 10 hours. Here is the past hour. And Pittsburgh is about to be hit. Anyway, that's a real-time lightning map for you from lightningmaps.org. Highly recommended the next time you hear thunder, especially if you're trying to decide whether or not you should run into the grocery store or not. I've used it for this purpose, and we hope you've used our channel for the purpose of understanding facts about space weather. Again, we come at this from a perspective of cosmology because I've been a cosmologist since about 1979, and uh, that's what I'm interested in advancing. It just so happens that these things are related. Cosmology relates to heliophysics, and heliophysics relates to geophysics, and so here we are. Do yourself a favor and press the subscribe button if you haven't, if you're new to the channel. Congratulations on realizing it exists. Frankly, we're surprised that you've even found the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, with the pathetic, ridiculous, nonsensical, and frankly evil state of affairs on social media. 
If you want to support the content, become a member of the Smash Team at smashamash.com slash smash team. There's a bronze level, which will cost you $0 a month, a silver level, which will entitle you to additional content. That'll cost you $2.99 a month. Or there's a gold member, which will cost you $9.99 a month. That'll get you even more additional content. You can also even have things like an at smashomash.com email address. Shout out to Robert and all of the rest of you who've decided to take on at smashomash.com email addresses. Did you know that most first names are still not taken? Yeah, most first names are still available. If you'd like your, if you'd like Bill at smashomash.com, I think that is still there. Smashomash.com slash smash team our own subscription services site that we launched because, well, we needed additional capabilities, so we gave them to you. Anyway, we're going to close out the video with the latest, perhaps the greatest, radar.weather.gov map. And here's a quick look at these strong storms, very strong storms here moving toward Lincoln, Nebraska. Yowzers, those could be producing damaging wind and hail. Check out those white areas. That means a lot of motion. That means hail is going to be likely. Hail, damaging wind, and possible tornadic activity there moving toward Lincoln. Here's a full 48 view. Here is clouds and fog over the lower 48. And there's the water vapor map. So there is a, a blocking high pressure zone right here that's going to prevent this from moving much farther to the south. And it's going to create massive pressure gradients as an atmospheric waterfall forms where that moisture meets that dry mass of air. There's also a push from behind from more dry mass of air from Canada. Here's a recap. And guess what? We've got one more bonus feature today. Here's the clouds and fog view. Strong low here forming around the Georgia-South Carolina coastal border. You can see that counterclockwise rotation beginning to start, but it is sucking in some dry massive air, so that won't help things. And let's close out by showing some images of the closest star. Here's our filament wavelengths. That's 304 plus 193 angstroms. It has been a banner day for filament indeed. Once again, thanks for tuning into the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. We'll see you soon with some more content. And while I'm gone, don't forget to ride bikes. Don't forget to visit our links. And may that solar wind be at your back.